You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors or narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. Tats, written by Lacey Gardner. Published by Square Pegs, Inc. Narrated by Lacey Gardner. Chapter 1 I'm a sucker for a nice pair of tits, and this pair ranks right up there with some of the nicest I've ever had in my face. The stripper teases me a minute longer before pulling her tits away. I tuck another twenty in her G-string, and she gives them back to me. Her long black hair blankets my head and shoulders, and I use my teeth to tug on her nipple ring. She jerks away, surprised, and offers me her ass instead. It takes a couple of more twenties to get her tits back this time. She's no fool. She plays keep away from me for the next three songs. Three songs is how long it takes to empty my pockets. Two grand, every cent I have, gone in the space of fifteen minutes. Did I mention I'm a sucker for a nice pair of tits? What's your name? I ask when she bends down near me again. Ginger, she whispers. Ginger, what time you get off? I'll get off right after you take me home, she answers with a bump and grind aimed right at my face. I'm sure the bump and grind seems like a good idea. What Ginger doesn't know is that her answer gets me so excited I lean forward, just enough that my nose smashes into her bump and her grind makes sure it's broken but good. I gush blood all over me, all over her, and all over the dance floor. I guess the smell of blood gets her all excited because the next thing I know she's pulling me by the collar out the back door. I stand in the employee parking lot like a fool with two tissues shoved up my nose while she yanks on jeans and a t-shirt. She throws a leg over the back of a Harley fat boy, fires up the engine, and yells over the pipes, Get on, you riding bitch! Ginger makes me ride bitch for the next six months. I clean the house, do the laundry, mow the lawn, wash the dishes, I even re-shingle the roof. If I'm good, she lets me ride her Harley. If I'm really good, she lets me ride her. I haven't been so good lately. This morning, Ginger finally drags home about 10 o'clock. She's wearing her favorite t-shirt. It's red with big letters across her tits that read, I like to fuck. Talk about your red flags. Where you been? I ask. Last time you stuck your nose in my business, I broke it, she says, crawling into bed and turning her back to me. I catch sight of that little birthmark on the inside of her thigh, and my thinking gets all cloudy. I get in bed, reach over, and caress her ass just the tiniest bit, and she turns and slaps the shit out of me. What the hell? I'm tired of being touched, she snaps. Everybody's always got their hands on me. Am I the only one who finds your t-shirt ironic? I mumble. She whips the shirt off over her head, wads it up, and throws it in my face. You like to fuck so much you wear it, she says, burying her face in the pillow. I think your idea of much and my idea of much are two different things, I say, crawling out of bed. I slip my jeans on over my boxers and a t-shirt over my wife beater. I throw on my leather jacket and my boots. I have my trusty pocket knife in my front pocket, 40 bucks in cash, and my driver's license. I pat my jacket pockets because I don't go anywhere without my journal and my well-worn paperback, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I'm walking out of the room when Ginger leans up on one elbow and says, If you're going riding, bring her back with the full tank. I nod goodbye to her nipple rings and walk out the door. There's just something about the vibration and rumble of a motorcycle that lifts my spirits no matter how low they are. I'm flying down the highway at 80 miles per hour, with my feet only three inches off the ground, the rising sun on my back, and chasing my own shadow. Ain't nothing sweeter. I check over my left shoulder and swing into the passing lane. I open the throttle to 90 plus and breeze right by the semi-truck in the right lane. He honks at me as I whip by, and I toss him a small wave before I edge back in his lane. I'm not a speedaholic. I just like to go fast. I laugh a little at that thought. I've met many a drunk who says, I'm not an alcoholic, I just like to drink. Who knows? 
Maybe I am a speedaholic. Speed jolts me full of adrenaline, and when I hear my heart pounding in my ears, I know for sure I'm alive. Besides, speed limits are just that. Limits. Me and limits? We don't get along so good. I like that ad that tells you to think outside the box. Life is too full of boxes as is. You watch TV, it's a box. You go on the computer, it's a box. Phones are boxes. A car is a box on four wheels. People go to work and sit in little cubicle boxes. Houses and offices and stores are just big boxes. When you die, they stuff you in another box. A motorcycle is not a box. That's what I like about them. Riding a motorcycle is life outside the box. I work on and rebuild old motorcycles. I find old pieces of junk and restore them. I don't just put them back the way they were. I make them better. It's not a great living, but it's living the way I want. And how many people can say that? I have a car, too. It's a necessity of life. You have to haul something somewhere or it's raining. You have to have a car. I own a 1976 Black El Camino. I named her Hell Camino. She looks like a beater, but I rebuilt every little piece of her engine myself, and she's pristine. Two drops of cold rain splatter me in the face. I dump the throttle to 65 and scan the streets for any familiar landmarks. I really have no idea where I am. I'm not lost as far as general directions go, but still, I don't know exactly where I am. I take the next exit and plan on working my way back on surface streets, and that's when the rain blasts me from about three different directions all at once. That's Oklahoma for you. If you don't like the weather, just wait a minute, because it'll change. Right now, half of Tulsa's sunny. But the half I'm unlucky enough to be in is like being under a waterfall. And when you're on a bike going 60 miles per hour, it feels like a swarm of bees stinging you all at once. I notch down the gas even more, and the wind blows me three feet to the left. I lean into the wind, guide the bike back over, and hug the white stripe before it throws me back to the middle of the road. I must look like that toy, the Weebles. I keep wobbling, but I don't fall down. I scour the road ahead, looking for a way to get out of this battering, I slide into the nearest parking lot, and, of course, it turns out to be a Walmart. I kick the bike down right near the front, in one of those spots where you're only supposed to park if you have a sick kid and you're getting them medicine. But who's going to argue with me over whether I have a sick kid or not? I unzip my jacket and hold the sides up, scrunch my head down like a turtle, and run right through the double doors of Big Blue. I stand over by the carts and shake myself off like a dog. Huddled directly across from me is a troop of green-clad Girl Scouts behind a folding table that's loaded down with boxes of cookies. All their little faces are shut down and miserable-looking. They all stare at me with their little lifeless eyes, and this one Girl Scout, the biggest, boldest one, waddles over to me, looks me up and down, and asks in a dead voice, "'You a woman or you a man?' I hold out the sides of my jacket, showing her my boobs, but she has the gall to look at my chest and make a face, like she considers my wares negligible. Okay, so my boobs aren't even big enough to be called tits, but being insulted by a ten-year-old still pisses me off. Buy some Girl Scout cookies, she orders. Now it's my turn to look her up and down and wonder when did little kids start getting so fat? If you ask me, she's not a very good advertisement for cookie sales. Looks to me like you've been eating all the profits, I say low. She sticks the toe of her brown loafer in the puddle around my feet and smears a streak across the floor. She cocks her head up at me and orders again, I said, buy some Girl Scout cookies. Do you all take credit cards? I ask, feeling guilty about my earlier remark. She snaps her head back real sassy-like and does that neck roll thing that black women are so good at, and says, What am I going to do with a credit card? Swipe it in my ass crack? She snaps her fingers at me for emphasis. I laugh. Good for her. She may be as wide as she is tall, but ain't nobody going to push her around. I buy $40 worth of thin mints. 
Ten minutes later, the sun is beating down bright, and I'm back on my way, forty dollars poorer, but cookie rich. I've no more than ridden a couple of miles before the floodgates open back up and the water's gushing out of the sky. I'm in the middle of open country on the outskirts of town, and there's nowhere to hide. Even the cows are circled together with their back ends pointing to the storm. Finally, I see a scraggly stand of trees alongside the road. I figure I might as well hunker down there until the storm passes. I ease the bike over under the trees, cut the engine, and slip the key in my front pocket. I unass and peer through the sheets of water. Damn, I'm in the middle of a cemetery. I don't like cemeteries. Probably because there's always dead people in them. I catch sight of a pole tent whipping in the wind about a hundred yards away. A bunch of people are herded under the tent, shoulder to shoulder, backs facing the wet. I unbungee the boxes of cookies from the luggage rack, stuff them as best I can under my jacket, and work my way through ankle-deep mud all the way to the tent. The people all watch me approach with big eyes, but none of them dare say a word. I have to nudge and poke, muttering some polite excuse me's before I make some room for myself. I'm about a head taller than everyone else here, what's new, and a few people glance nervously at my dreadlocks, which is exactly what I like about my locks. They give me a cushion of space around myself that most people are afraid to enter. Well, this is about the last place I thought I'd be when I started out this morning, teetering on the edge of an open grave, my boots sliding in the mud, clutching the damn thin mints under my jacket, with all these social climbing, golf playing, country club, martini drinking fat asses ogling me like I'm the weird one. I scan the crowd of faces and realize most of these people are my age. They just look way older. I don't get it. Why do women in the Midwest hit 30 and automatically lose all sense of style? It's like hormones or lack of kick in and create an insatiable appetite for polyester flowers and capri pants. I pride myself on not having much fashion sense, but I don't have to read any fashion magazine to know that capri pants do not make fat legs look thinner. And somebody should pull these women aside and tell them that more makeup doesn't mean more beautiful. I once saw lipstick on a pig, but that didn't make it pretty. I'm just wet and cold and pissed off. These people don't deserve shit from me. I remind myself that these people are actually out there running in the rat race. I'm just sitting on the sidelines watching. Besides, somebody they love died, and here I am making fun of their damn clothes. I take a deep, ragged breath and try to think respectful thoughts. I overhear snippets of the conversation whirling around me. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, instant implosion, homecoming queen. A paunchy man about half my height leers at me, and for a moment I think he's eyeing my boobs before I realize he's actually drooling over my cookies. I edge over and nonchalantly hide my cookies behind the closest large woman. I glance toward the sky, looking for a break in the weather and, hopefully, a break in my future. And just like that, the rain stops, the clouds part, and a golden spotlight of sunshine illuminates the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. Well, okay, not really. It's still raining, and the woman I left behind in bed is actually way more hot. But there's just something about this one. Tats Written by Lacey Gardner Published by Square Pegs, Inc. Narrated by Lacey Gardner You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.